So this is the July 14 meeting of the Groton Inland Wetland Agency. Dave Scott's the chair. Uh, public will have the opportunity to address the commission under public communications if, if you're not an applicant. Um, you'll need to do that under the public communications portions of the agenda um, by raising your hand on an Apple device. You can find that at the top of your screen. On a PC, it's at the bottom. If you're on the phone, it is star nine. All right. all right, Dave, it's all you. There you go. Uh, we need to appoint Annie as a regular member. Well, she's, she's, not, not, she's here. not here tonight. I, <laughs> I found that out after I had sent you the agenda. So it's just the three. Just us, Dave. Okay. Uh, public communications, Deb? I do not see anyone with their hand up. Um, I don't have anything, do you, Bruce? No, I don't have anything. Okay. All right. Approval of the minutes of June 23rd. I make a motion to approve the minutes of June 23rd. Second. Okay. All those in favor, <laughs> say goodbye by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. We have no new applications. So we're down to 798 Groton Long Point Road. All right, it looks like um, Greg Fettis is here along with the owner, Donna Ralston. So I'm going to promote them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think we're all familiar with this. Yes, we are. So this is the second time you guys have seen this. Um, you recall at the last meeting, we, uh, we, we got the plan just before the meeting and um, staff didn't have um, much time to review it, but um, we did this time. So I don't know if you want Greg to do his presentation again and then get staff comments. Okay. Greg, yeah, you yes, yeah. please. Look at the plans. Am I able to? I looked at the plans and your footings go past the 35 foot line, I noticed. Um, <clears throat> the footings? Yeah, for the wall. Um, I don't think, uh, well, let me, let me bring the, can I bring the plan? Can I share my screen? Sure. Uh, you should be able to, yes, yeah, if you can. Everyone can see that. Yep. So yeah, where the so the thirty-five feet. Let me just give a brief introduction, then I'll address that question. Um, this is Greg Fettis with Fettis Engineering, office at uh, Seventy Essex Street in Mystic, Connecticut. Um, so we are proposing, as the house is shown here, tucked into the. Uh, I guess it's the western and southern setbacks uh, as far kind of to the left of the screen and to the bottom of the screen as, as, as much as possible. Uh, we got a, a private access way coming in that we have rights to use to, to come in off of Groton Long Point Road. Uh, we picked up the driveway in, in the Campbell Road uh, uh, Paper Street area here and we, and we basically come into a garage under um, Kind of given the grades. Uh, so the top of wall is at 50, uh, 51, elevation 51. Uh, you can see the existing 48 contour that runs basically along uh, the face of the wall. So it's really just a three foot, uh, three foot wall. Um, I think what you had seen previously was boulders, a minimum size of two feet, uh, placed in a kind of a similar fashion or similar area. Um, uh, silt fence uh, down between the uh, wetlands and our and our buffer uh, replanting buffer area. Uh, so we're proposing a number of trees uh, throughout that area plus some ground cover. Um, and basically, it's going to be undisturbed once the wall is in place and those plants are planted. Uh, 
So let me just uh, zoom out a little bit. Um, there's a plant list and so forth. I uh, just wanna make sure there's nothing else on this plan that you need to talk about. Uh, we did get rid of the fence as I discussed last time. Uh, and we did increase that we originally had a 25 foot buffer to the wall. Now we're at 35, which was similar to what was previously approved. Um, so the footing, let me just blow up the detail of the wall. So the face of the wall um, is at 35 feet, which is a which is a hard, uh, basically almost vertical face. Um, the footing is crushed stone, uh, which is down below grade, at least a foot below grade, um, and that's sitting on uh, kind of virgin ground uh, beneath that. So <laughs> yes, uh, uh, looks like probably about a foot or so. <clears throat> probably to 34 feet underground just for the construction of the wall uh, is closer than 35 feet. Uh, but it's only this small little square right here, which is about a foot, one foot by one foot. Um, and that's just to spread the load out of the wall. Again, it's a three foot wall. It's uh, not a, um, wouldn't even require a building permit as long as it's under three feet. Uh, it's, it's almost borderline landscape wall, um, but we are retaining soil, so we call it a retaining stone retaining wall. Uh, masonry will uh, be utilizing the rocks that are on site um, in, the le in, the, in the ledge that we do. Uh, we're not blasting, but we're removing by uh, feathers and wedges, uh, which basically will split it into, you know, usable pieces. I just noticed that your your disturbance is moving a foot into the zone that we told you to stay out of and uh, a foot times the length of the wall adds up to be quite a bit. Yeah, we're, we're going to be in there anyway, planting trees um, and so forth, and then kind of put it back at the same grades that were there that are currently there. It's different planting a tree versus excavating for the wall. Yeah, could you maybe sort of uh, discuss how you're going to um, do the footings, construct, you know, I, I get how you're going to construct the wall, but could, so what will you do? Excavate with a small excavator, a trench kind of thing? Uh, yeah, well, basically the plan would be, I'm going to blow this back up again would be to dig, um, so the wetlands are to the left of this wall section. Yep. Uh, so we basically dig down uh, two feet on the low side across the six foot width towards away from the wetlands and basically put a foot of stone in, set that first stone and then backfill uh, on the, again, on the wetland side, that one foot to bring it back to uh, existing grade on the lower on the low side of the wall and then basically, it, basically just work our way up uh, the wall and backfill uh, the uphill side uh, kind of as we go. What machine are you using Greg? Oh uh, we'd use a uh, uh, would it be a mini excavator somewhere a smaller excavator it's not a it's not a, a big machine um, probably get in there to dig even the uh, tree ball, you know, the tree, uh, whatever you call those, the, the burlap, all of the trees, I would use a mini excavator for that also. Um, and so if you run into ball. stone in the trench? Uh, we, we, uh, if we run into like ledge in the trench, we're only going down two feet. I don't suspect we will, but if we do, then it would be even less. Uh, we wouldn't need to go, you know, we're not going to uh, you know, we're not going to break the stone out, put, put the crushed stone back in. So if we do hit ledge, uh, we'll build right on top of the ledge. So all this, go ahead. all this footing material is permeable? Yes, it's, it's, a crushed, it's a crushed stone. 
Yeah. Okay. I don't mean to be picky, but we were very concerned the last time about the 35 feet. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're only going a foot, uh, you know, to, to get that bottom stone in there. I mean, we, I, you know, I, could we go to 36 feet so we don't have this issue? Uh, I'm guessing we could, because I think the closest point, uh, you know, we're really, for the, mo for the most part of it, we are way over the 35 feet. I just showed you uh, that one dimension, which is kind of this area, right? So it's only this area here. And I'm guessing even at the end, it's probably, uh, I'll pull a plan out and measure it, but I'm guessing it's uh, probably 36 feet at the end of that wall. And the end of that wall is basically not even a foot high. So um, yeah, that's, it's, yeah, but my being too picky. All right. Um, nope. I mean, if, if you guys need to hold 35 feet, because that was the original permit, it sounds to me like Greg can move it. Yeah, I don't think we have a problem. It's just, uh, you know, it's a very small section that's at least, that's uh, that's right at 35. So if we had to pull it back to, uh, you know, 36, and I'll also just look at maybe uh, making the footing shorter. Yeah, that's a good idea too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I just so, worry about this. Again, site. it's not a tall wall. Yeah, no, I just Very worry good. about this site because uh, you know it's not it's not a visible drive by. So um, unless our staff is there having to check on this, I just um, I just want to make sure things go just as they're supposed to go. And I know everyone has the great, greatest of intentions, but sometimes- The execution is different. The execution is different. Thank you for taking, thank you for finishing that. That's what I needed. Yeah, um, yeah. And so um, I'm with Dave. I know it sounds really nitpicking, but for one foot, just, just please make sure that you're 35. That's, that's already closer than we could allow and I know we gave a permit before so here we are so I, I feel the same way I'm please just try to keep with the 35. Yeah I think that's fine and uh, Bruce, you know Bruce has been out several times so he, he's very familiar with the site uh, we welcome him uh, back out anytime to check on us. Good. All right. So we'd add a add a uh, sentence about keeping the excavation to the thirty five foot line. Yep. That's for, fine. For for the wall, I mean, obviously, if they're going to put uh, trees and shrubs in there, right. yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, again, go the, ahead. Yeah, for the wall. All right. Any other questions? And do, can I just see, I'm not, I, it's hard for me on the Zoom here, the trees that you're planning on planting, Greg? Sorry. Uh, yes. Someday we're gonna meet in per per person. <laughs> well, this is our plant list of the apple tree was uh, the owner kind of wanted some apple trees down there, but um, I think the other two were recommended by the uh, local nursery. Certainly the elderberry. Barbara, what do you think about the holly yeah. tree? Yeah, that's an interesting choice. Interesting choice. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way I put that. <laughs> I love you, Barbara. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> Well, you know, it gives you some evergreen um, in there. Um, you know, it's, is that a, is it a native holly? I'm not sure that that That's is. What, I don't, he said, I think it looks pretty, uh, looks pretty generic as it were, genus yeah. ilex. So, yeah. I mean, maybe. Because the American ilex is quite an imposing 
tree. Absolutely. And um, so I guess that would be my my recommendation. It looks like it might be they're estimating 40 to 50 feet tall. So yeah. So yeah, maybe Greg, you could just sort of um, uh, hone that in and just say mm. uh, American holly. Mm. Is it is it Ilex Americana, Barbara? I can't remember. Good question. I Shoot. can't remember either. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, um, Ilex, I don't think it's Americana, but it's yeah. easy enough to find out. Yeah. So just the American version and um, yeah, I, I'm I'm okay with with. Yeah, that. me too. Yeah. Ilex opaca, maybe? Yeah, yeah that's what I just got. I yeah. like yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I don't know what the other one is. Is it Ilex verticillata? Is that? No. No, no that's the. Um, that's the shrub. Uh, Winterberry. Winterberry. Talk I like spiritual salada. It's, it's beautiful, but it's more shrubby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Than tree like. Well, anyway, you get the direction yeah. we're going. Yeah. So um, I think the one, yeah, we spec might have just been in the, it's in the family. So it's the same. Mm. It's pretty much the same. But okay. Mm. okay. That's fine. Other questions? No. We have a draft motion. Oh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just had one thing to point out, just to, to clarify to make sure we're all on this page here, if you don't mind. Um, Greg, if you could go to the northern part of the site, like zoom out a little bit. So you can see in the, in the bottom of the site there, there's, you know, it's pretty defined. There's 35 feet. There shows plantings over there. Um, and the retaining wall, the northern part of the site over here is blank. So I didn't know if the agency wanted to tighten that up a little bit. If you are, you know, want to, I, I did put a condition in there that there be no clearing, cutting, or um, alterations in areas that aren't specified. But I didn't know, you know, with the 35 feet, I know you guys want to hold that line. I didn't know if you wanted to continue that line to the northern part of the site to keep the same distance buffer between the wetlands and um, alteration north up, up there. That's that's a great pickup, Bruce. Uh, really, yeah. Real, really awesome there. So to me, uh, Greg, do you want to speak on what they're planning for that little kind of rectangly area that's, uh, are they going to grass that? I don't even know. I can't remember. Is that that ledge too? Well, some of that is ledge, and I think they're just going to kind of leave it for now as uh, undisturbed. Or, okay. you know, they, they, I think they cleaned it up a little bit, but it's, they're not planning anything right now. They're not planting a lawn back here. Our extent of grading is, you can kind of see the darker lines here. Um, right. You know, they're not, they're, right now they're not planting anything up there. So. So Bruce, are you looking to um, suggest that there be kind of a non-disturbance line past the wall? Feet. Past the wall, yeah, yeah, of 50 feet. What do you think in there, we're, Bruce? We're, we're 35, I mean, I, I, I was just thinking that after, I mean, I, I wanted to kind of clean that up and, and definitely have it on the plan to kind of show, you know, where we're clearing, where we're not, just so like there's it. not any, like you know, it. confusion, but, um, then I thought of the 35 foot because, you know, you guys were, were talking about that and I thought maybe that would just be a clean way to do it is to ask the applicant to revise the plan with a 35 foot yeah. uh, no clearing limit line. Love that island. idea. Yeah. I love I love that idea. I'm very supportive of that. Me I too. Like, I like being clean. And uh, yeah, that was really the only, the only other comment I had. Awesome. Thanks for pointing that out. So we got to put that in the motion. Okay. We can, need... somebody, can somebody put a motion up there to read or no? <laughs> yeah, Greg, if you could stop sharing, I'll I'll put the motion up and. Okay.
I guess we're going to have to wordsmith this a little bit, but it shouldn't be difficult. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the Ralston single family dwelling at 798 Groton Long Point Road for the construction of a new single family dwelling, deck, gravel driveway, and associated grading and clearing. Uh, to approve the Ralston single family home for the following reasons. There's no loss of wetland or water cross associated with this application. The erosion and control sediment plan will provide adequate protection for the wetlands during construction. This permit is subject to the four standard conditions and the following modification. No clearing, cutting, alterations, or dumping of material shall occur on the wetland side of the silt fence line shown on the approved plans or within the upland review area that is not specified on the approved plan. Number two, the retaining wall, the three foot retaining wall, um, there, there shall be no activity within 35 feet of the wetland boundary. And number three, there shall be no clearing in the Uh, it, starts at, it starts at wetland flag four. At, at wetland flag four, um, uh, 250 within, feet. Two well, I think we said 35, Dave. At, with mm. 50, yeah, we're going to just take that 35 and draw it out. It, I, yeah, I think you just want to say that you're going to extend the 35 foot non disturbance line all the way to, is it McDonald Court? So. Mm -hmm. That is so what I wanted to say, Deb. Okay. Yeah, that's number three. Yeah, yeah. Second. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. We have a jurisdictional ruling on the low lift pump station. Yep, and we have somebody here. So hang on just a minute. Uh, Derek Hopkins um, is here on behalf of Groton Utilities and he can run through the project um, for you. Um, Derek, do you have the plans? I can also share them if you like. Uh, I do have the plans. Um, you should be able to share. All right. Uh, am I missing the share screen? Okay. Um, let me make you a panelist and see if that does it for you. Should be able to now. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Might be easier if you do. Um, okay, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, I'm okay. running into a firewall issue for some reason. Oh yeah, no problem. Okay, let me just get it up here. Um, okay, so you tell me what sheet you want me on. Um, let's go to sheet C2, the third one in. I'll just uh, kind of give a, a rough overview and background of the project. Um, <clears throat> this project kind of came about last fall. Um, Groton Utilities has been undergoing a um, series of improvements to the water treatment plant. One of those improvements was to build a dissolved air flotation system, um, which relies on what's called a, a saturator. And when they started this system up last fall, they immediately ran into some issues, didn't know what was going on, took the saturators apart and found out that uh, they had an eel intrusion problem into the plant. Um, previously, they had known the eels were getting in, <clears throat> but with the prior treatment technology, it wasn't really an issue. But with this new technology coming online, it did become an issue. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, 
you know, these eels got in and basically got turned to eel pate uh, to shut the plant down. Um, last year, the utility had the ability to go back to the old plant, um, but that's since been brought offline in favor of the new plant. So we were called in uh, to try to address this eel ingress into the plant issue. Uh, so right here, you see the existing low lift pump station. Uh, how it functions right now is uh, you see the dark lines coming off the face of the building. Uh, can you make that a little bit bigger? Please? Yeah, let me see if I can do that. Thanks. Yeah, so yeah, right now there's these, uh, there's a concrete apron that comes off the existing face of the building that directs the water inside the building to the uh, low lift pumps. Um, Right now, that is just an open channel, basically. And if you go to, I think, sheet PR2, it should be the sixth one down. We have some photos of that. Um, yeah, so those upper two photos are the, the channel as it exists now. Um, what happens now is the water comes into the building. It travels through these two uh, traveling mechanical screens, the large green boxes and that uh, fifth photo. Mm -hmm. And those screens were built, um, I believe in 67 was their installation. They were never built with the intent of keeping eels out of the plant. Uh, the eels easily get around them. Uh, so we went through a series of design alternatives and investigations to see what we could do, whether if we could refab these machines, uh, replace them with a newer unit, um, or if we had to look in a different direction. And, and the end story was that we had to go in a, a different direction. The replacements for these machines um, would never be able to seal that channel tight enough to keep the eels out. And the eels are, they're mature eels. Um, they travel upstream as juveniles. Um, they mature up in the fresh water. And then when they're ready to spawn, so these are relatively large animals. They come back downstream to get to the ocean. And in that process, what they're doing is they're seeking velocity to find their way downstream. So when they get to this point in the, the watershed, they really have the option of going over the spillway or the option of seeing the velocity of these pumps turning on. And unfortunately, sometimes they choose to go with the pumps um, and there's just not a way for them to get out after that occurs. So if you scroll down to the next sheet. I don't want to see any eel pate. No. <laughs> no, no one does. I, it was not a, a pleasant experience from what I, I heard. Um, so what we came up with and what we're proposing to do is add a pair of, uh, the generic term would be passive screens. Um, these particular screens are manufactured by Johnson Screens. Um, they're 30 inches in diameter. And they're basically a, a wire wrapped cylinder. And the wire is wrapped uh, to within a 1 16th inch opening. Um, and we chose that size for two reasons. One, it should keep the large, well, it will keep the large eels out, but it should also keep the juvenile eels out, uh, even though they're, they're not particularly an issue. We wanted to make sure we kept the water as clean as possible. Um, also, we need to be able to make sure that we're not constantly clogging these screens with algae or sediment or any other biologics that might encounter them. Uh, the screens themselves um, will attach to the existing intake structure with a basically a, a steel plate that's going to close off those existing channels um, and come out through the 30 inch pipes there to meet the screens. Um, that way the, the pump station is now sealed from the reservoir other than being, other than the water entering through the screens. Um, the screens are designed to have a half foot, a second velocity coming into them. And that will again, prevent eels seeking the water velocity from finding them. It also prevents fish impingement on the screen that's um, an EPA rule it, really for power plants, but we utilized it here. Um, again, we don't want to endanger any wildlife by having them sucked up on the screen. <laughs> so wildlife will be able to move around it. Um, we'll keep the eels out. Um, all the construction for this project, while we do have these screens kind of out past the end of the wing wall, 
uh, if you scroll down a little bit, they will be basically cantilevered over the end of, end of the apron there. So there won't be any structure in the actual mud line. There won't be any dredging down there to you know fit these in. We've had the divers out last Wednesday to confirm that. Um, all the pipe supports will be on the concrete apron. So again, we're not we're not going to touch any sediment here. Uh, that apron itself is pretty clean um, from what the divers found last week. Um, the entire project, there are some internal components to the building. There's the demo of the existing screens, um, but you know, again, we're not going to change. There's no excavation. We won't change the operating water surfaces. Um, you know, the, the shoreline will be in the exact same location. Um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. We will equip the, um, the pipes with some special blue lights that act as a behavioral deterrence to the eels, just as kind of a, a belt and suspenders approach. Um, but that is, that is really it in a nutshell. I, I do kind of believe in brevity, so I'll, I'll stop there and let you ask any questions you might have. Uh, these blue lights are not ultra ultraviolet, are they? No, they're uh, they're an indigo, a violet indigo spectrum. Uh -huh. it's still a visible light. Well, this seems like a win-win to me. <clears throat> so, so I, as I think you you guys know, um, operation of a public water supply and reservoir system, including dams, facilities, and all of that, um, are permitted as of right, mm -hmm. um, but they need to come and confirm that with you that that's what they're doing. So mm -hmm. that's what this jurisdictional ruling mm -hmm. is. Um, so I'm gonna stop this screen share and I will pull up the motion that was sent out to you. Mm -hmm. There we go. <clears throat> I make a motion to find that the proposed low lift pump station at the water filtration facility 1286 McQuanic Road <clears throat> is a facility necess necessary to the impounding storage and withdrawal of water in connection with the public water supply. The agency determines that this activity is permitted as of right in inland wetlands and water courses uh, per section 4.1E of the Town of Groton Inland Wetlands and Water Course Regulations and does not require a wetland permit. We have a second. Second. All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Very good. Thank Thanks. you for explaining that, Derek, though. That was really yes. nice of you. Appreciate it. Um, I didn't realize the, the eels were such a problem. I know. Uh. Well, I don't think the water utility did either until last year. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right, well, thank, thank you. you very much. All right, well, thank you. Night. The only thing I have is that it's a good time to get out and browse around with all the rain we've had to look for places where there's erosion or something going on. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep on. Bruce, can you just give a report on the Noank ledger? I can't tell. I drove by there again today. So there's a hole. Um, what? Uh, I don't know what's going on back there. Yeah, the whole actually happened today. Um, okay. But yeah, it, but um, so I, I did talk to them today. I drove by and um, I looked at the site. Um, the silt fence was down when I was there, um, covered in dirt. And um, apparently they're getting their tank in on Friday. And okay. I, I told them that on Friday, the silt fence needs to be up and needs to be cleaned up by Friday. And I'm gonna be out there either on Friday or early next week okay. to make sure, or there's going to be some enforcement on there. I didn't hear the last part of that, sweetie. Then, or, or there's going to be some enforcement action. Okay. Super. Over there. Yeah. Yeah, it just, yeah. I just, again, I, I, I understand the situation and I'm sympathetic to it, but you know, we just need to make sure that they're just really aware that of how close they are. Yeah, I know. So you're all over it. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I drive by there every day on the way to work and on the way out too. So I'm, I'm okay. watching it. Awesome. And so would you mind, because we're not going to meet now until August, so would you mind just sending out a quick um, 
I don't know, just a little like checked it out, ba da ba, something, maybe sometime mid next week. Would that be okay? Sounds, yeah, I'll, I'll inspect um, early next week and send out an email. I would, really, I would really appreciate that. Thank you. Other comments? <clears throat> It's a good time to look at things because it's gotten a real workout with the rain we've had. Do you think? <laughs> Although we've had a lot less than they have had upstate. Mm, yeah. But still. But still. Close so I've to got three inches is not nothing to sneeze at. I've got one thing. Um, I, I had a complaint um, maybe a week and a half ago of someone was concerned that there was some tree removal in open space at the Deerfield subdivision. Oh. So, so Mark Berry, the Parks and Rec director, and I went out to, to look at it. And, and indeed, um, there was a, a small amount of trees that had been removed um, in order to install a garden. Hang on, Deb, um, where is the open space in the Deerfield I, subdivision? I am just gonna call up the plan, hang on. Oh, yay. So I think I remember it's that kind of that it's that it's a mode area, blah, 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 up there. Um, adjacent yeah. to. So, OK, so this uh, well, maybe this is not as helpful as I thought. Um, this is Heather Glenn Lane. Um, let me just see if there is there is a large piece of open space that is in between Heather Glen Lane and Pumpkin Hill Road. It's huge. Mm. This is the main road when you go in Heather, right. Heather Glen, it goes north. When so we the, were having the disc golf, is it kind of there? No. It's before you get there. Before you get to that. Before you right. get to the disc golf is north of this. But it's on the same road. Okay. 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 So the, the lot in question is this one, lot 18. Yes. So the house, you know, was placed over here where the number 18 was, just as it was shown on there. Um, and these folks have, have made garden space throughout their entire property. I mean, vegetable gardens all throughout it and including just most recently over here. Oh. In the open space, okay. Off their property. It, yeah, exactly, off their property. Um, so. These folks are the original owners. Um, so some, I don't even know, 25, 28 years here. They do not speak very good English. So Mark and I communicated with their daughter um, to, to make them understand, first of all, Mark Berry is gonna allow them to harvest what they've planted in the open space and then pull everything out. Um, and and no, more, <laughs> no, no more garden in there. Um, but you can see that there are wetlands and buffer on the property, okay? Mm -hmm. And again, they have fruit trees, they have garden space, they have, it's, it's all vegetable garden. Oh boy. Um, gardens are, are permitted as mm. of right, you know, in wetland and in upland review areas by extension. Um, so I, I think we've made it clear that any other garden area that they, they develop needs, they need to contact me um, so that we can, I can let you folks know about it. Um, but but these, these gardens are long established, um, mm. raised beds, fruit trees, mm -hmm. all, all of that. So personally, I think we can consider this something that's permitted as of right. I think they understand they can't go any further at this point and they're not going to do any more in the open space. But I wanted to let you know about this issue. You can't see it very well from the road. So it was, I think it was a neighbor who had contacted me. Mm. Did, uh, I, again, I'm so sorry because I'm getting older by the minute, but didn't we have something a number of years ago uh, similar to this in this area where there was, am I, am I making it up in my mind? So it wasn't on a lot. It was okay. on an open space. And, okay. and yeah, the developer was using that area as, basically a dump spot for excess okay. material okay so yeah. so yeah okay we did but i haven't had i have not had very much enforcement action in the deerfield subdivision that's I, great yeah yeah and the only thing is i mean i get that uh, a garden obviously as you guys know i'm all over gardens but um i get that gardens are permitted as of right but i 
feel like this particular area, I mean, you know, it was a sensitive application, sensitive, everything about this was sensitive. And so I just would hate um, a buffer upland yep. review area is not meant to be a garden, um, unfortunately, you know, in, in, in a perfect right. world. Right, I, yeah. right. Um, yeah. So we're, we're spelling all this out in a letter. So I, I'm sure their daughter, I mean, they, the husband seemed to understand what we were saying, you know, next year on my property. I mean, he understood what we were saying that mm. he should not. And he understood our, actually the surveyor that works for public works had gone out and staked his property line. Mm. So, so now he knows exactly where his property line mm. is. Um, <clears throat> And and we'll pull you know the the interesting vegetables he's growing back onto his property. Mm. Okay. So wanted to let you know, and I'll you know now that we know about it, I think Bruce and I drove by there today, so he's aware of it. We can we'll keep an eye on it. Awesome. Mm. Is there any way to access that area? Um, only through their their house, essentially. Or the neighbors. Or the neighbors, yeah. I mean, the, not through the open space. There's no trails or, or anything through there in this area. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I might go knock on the neighbor's door and ask them if I could cross to have a look at it. Mm -hmm. Where's the, because the Red Brook runs there, yeah? It, it does. It's well into the open space. It is. How many, so can you just uh, make me feel better and tell me how far away it is from where they are? Just say I can, a big, I, just say a big number for me, Deb. It is no, it it truly is, it, yeah. but I don't know how many hundreds of feet. Okay, all right, that that's all I wanted to yeah. hear. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not right there. No, no, absolutely okay. not. All right, it's not right there. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, that sounds like you guys are handling that just right, and it sounds like Dave is gonna, yep, give you some what's, assistance. <laughs> what's the uh, how, what's the house number of the next door neighbor? Um, I don't know. This one is ninety four. Heather Glenn, I don't know the adjacent number. Next door is 102, Heather Glenn. Mm. Folks like. Good job. Well, yeah, Google Maps, it can be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can find it from that. Yeah. You'd be, you right. be, you be good if you go out there, Dave. You'd be good. You'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Always nice. Yeah. Plus, people want to get confrontational, <laughs> then you know I can do others. <laughs> yep. I, I mean, they understand when, when you tell them you're from the town. They, they knew what that was about. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Deb. Mm -hmm. We have anything else? Do not. All right. We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> Barbara, you're our second today. <laughs> yeah. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right. When's aye. our next meeting? What's the date of our next meeting? It is August 10th. Perfect. And, and I hope we will be in person. Um, they're working on room two. Um, as long as we have recording equipment in there, you, you know, it may not be a hybrid meeting, but as long as we have recording equipment, we can we can meet. Okay, dynamite. All right. right. Thanks so much, you guys. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Good night, everybody. everybody. Bye. Good night. Good night.